if you're getting ready for your paramedic and REMT. Here we go. I'm so excited that you're here. I got the whiteboard out. We're gonna be going over the first section on EKG waves and everything you gotta know about these waves. Now, if you're new here or you've been here for a while, I want you to do me a favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, and make sure to comment down below which of these was your favorite lesson. Now, here we go. Now, first we're gonna talk about the EKG wave you gotta know. Now let's start over here with the isoelectric line, okay? Now this isoelectric line, why is it important? It's our baseline for determining where all these waves are. But most importantly, the second piece is we're gonna use that isoelectric line to actually determine stuff like PR depression, like ST elevation or depression. Now we're going to talk about all that, but this right here, the isoelectric line, is the straight line, okay, that is in between the heartbeats, if you will, okay? It is the line before this slope starts for the P wave. Before the P wave starts, this is the isoelectric line that we're going to use. Now, what is the P wave? Here it is, right here is the P wave, okay? Now, the P wave, what it is, it's the atria firing. It's the atria depolarizing, okay? So, when I say depolarizing, it is that portion of the heart's turn to go, to fire off, okay? If I say repolarizing, that's the relaxing time, okay? So, the P wave, right here. That means it's the atrius turn, the top of the heart, it's their turn to fire, it's their turn to go, okay? Now over here, from this beginning line of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave is the PRI, which is so important, we're gonna talk about in our second lesson on heart blocks. Now, the PR interval, okay? What it is, is that space from the beginning of the P all the way so the first section here, you can see the start of that Q, all right? Now, over here, we see the PRI duration is 0.12 to 0.20. That's a normal PR interval. Now remember, on EKG, 0.04 seconds, that is one small box. 0.20 is one large box, which is five small boxes. Okay, so that means the PRI is three small boxes all the way up to five small boxes is normal. We have too short, we have too long if it's over or under. Okay, now here it is. Now, we have the QRS. So you can see here, very important note, please write this down in your notes. You can comment it down below if you gotta remember or take a note or whatever you need to do. Here it is. The QRS you can see here. The Q wave is the first negative deflection on the EKG. What does that mean, a negative deflection? You're gonna hear these buzzwords. A positive deflection, a negative deflection. Well, here's the isoelectric line. A wave that points up is a positive deflection. A wave that points down is a negative deflection, okay? now. Here's the isoelectric, this goes up. It's called the P wave. That is the first positive deflection on EKG, where the Q wave is the first negative deflection on EKG, and the second positive deflection is the R, second negative deflection is the S, and the third positive deflection is the T. Now the QRS complex, think complex like coming together, it's the QR and the S wave, they form a team called the QRS complex. That is when the ventricles depolarize, okay? The ventricles depolarize, they go off, they're turn to fire, QRS complex. Now, what is the ST segment? Simply the space, when the, you can see here the S wave, you can see it ends, we have a flat line, and it goes right here over 
to the beginning of the T wave. Now, the ST segment is the area where you look at as a paramedic to determine if it is elevated or depressed. And that has to do with is your patient having a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, or not? Okay. Now, the T wave here is when the ventricles repolarize. Re sounds like relax. So that's when the ventricles relax. Okay. Now, when, where does the atria relax? Well, there's no atria repolarization on EKG because the QRS complex is so large, there's no way for it, okay? Now, there it is. Now, a few other things I wanna go over on waves, okay? Now, here it is. You can see here the QRS complex has a duration. That's duration under a normal circumstance. So, the QRS and the QT intervals have some funky numbers. Not everyone fully agrees on it, but remember this, my friends. No test is trying to trick you up with little milliseconds. It needs to know, are you competent when you're taking care of an SVT? Are you competent when you're taking care of a sinus bradycardia with symptoms? Are you competent when you're taking care of an MI patient, right? So don't worry so much, but you gotta understand what I'm about to tell you. So please listen up. 0.08 to 0.10 seconds. You can see here, okay? That is considered normal under any circumstance. That's a normal QRS complex. Anything less than 0.08 is considered too short. That is just period, okay? Now here's what you should consider. A QRS complex that is over 0.08 one zero up to 0 0.12 that could be considered delayed it is not wide it's delayed a wide qrs complex is anything over 0 0.12 so a wide qrs could be abnormal electrolytes right it also could be certain overdose on medications it also could be a ventricular rhythm, like a lethal arrhythmia, okay? So, just a few of the things that a wide QRS can be. A wide QRS is over 0.12. That is not good. Now, what did I write here about the ST? You can see here, equal to the isoelectric line and watch out. My paramedics are watching this video. You got to know this. You're getting ready for an REMT. This is so important. Look, the ST segment right here, we do not, we, we're trying to see if it's elevated or depressed when we're looking at a 12 lead. What we do is we look over here at the isoelectric line. That's what we do. We do not ever look at the PR interval line over here, which is only part, part of the PR interval. We don't look at that. Because what if your patient has pericarditis and is a PR depression? We don't do that. So we always say, okay, here's the isoelectric. Here's the ST. Is it, e is it up, down, or okay? Is it equal? Is it elevated, depressed? That's the key with the ST. Now here's the QT. A normal QT by the books could be anywhere between 0 0.4 and 0 0.44 for males, 0 0.46 for females. Now here's where things get complicated about the QT interval. I gotta just tell you the information. Now here it is. If it is below, which would be right here, let's say it's zero point, now I'll write it down for you. Let's say it's 0 0.35. Anything lower than that is considered abnormally, like watch out way too low, okay, on a QT interval, which the QT interval goes from right here to all the way over to here, okay? So that's gonna be your QT, okay? So if we have the beginning of the Q, all the way to the end of the T, okay? Now, the final point here is women have a higher QT interval. So what that means? What that means is when we have the QT interval, a, a woman might be 0 0.46, that's okay, okay? Just want you to know about that. It could be a slightly longer. But what everybody can agree on, my friends, is if you have a QT interval over 0 0.50, that is abnormally high. 
over 0.44 or 0.46, that would be prolonged delayed. If it's over 0.50, that's way too long. Okay, that's what we can determine. So here are the main players. That's way too low. That's way too high. Somewhere in this range here, it's gonna be about normal. So on a test question, they may say the patient's QT interval is like 0.5 something. Is that normal? No, okay. You gotta understand this. This is all the ways, all the numbers that you need to know to get ready for your paramedic and our EMT. So now we're gonna move into another section. We're gonna talk about heart blocks. A lot of confusion about heart blocks. Not after this video. I won't stand for it. Here we go. All right, everybody, you've made it through. I'm so proud of you. You got through the first piece. We're on to the second piece it is heart blocks. Now, here we go. Now, if I can tell you one thing about heart blocks, stick in your mind for the rest of your career, for the rest of your life. Here it is heart blocks equals. PRI. What does that mean? My friends, if you understand that, that heart blocks have to only do with the PRI, all you need to do is look at the PR interval on the heart block EKG that you're trying to assess, and you can understand in two seconds exactly what it is. Now, here we go. The first degree heart block is just a variant of old age. That's all it is, okay? You, you will see first degree heart blocks multiple times throughout your career. You print it out, you look at it, usually an elderly patient, and they're fine, okay? Now, the first degree heart block is not a actual block. It's actually more of a delay of the PRI, the PR interval. So, all this is, is you notice that the PRI is over 0.2 seconds. That's it, okay? It's all, so you say here, here's an EKG, first degree heart block. There's no drop beats, okay? Every single QRS has a P wave with it. There's no drop beats in a first degree heart block. The only thing I see in this EKG that makes it abnormal is the PR interval is a little too long. That's a first degree heart block. Usually, nine out of 10 times, a variant of old age. Now let's move on. Here it is, the second degree type one, also known as the Winky Bach, also known as longer, longer, longer drops, longer, longer drops. Now what does that mean? Remember, heart blocks equal PRI. So with the second degree type one, which I'm showing you the EKGs in the screen here as we go along, the second degree type one heart block. You'll notice the PRI, the PR interval, will get longer and longer and longer, and the beat will just drop. And it's a P wave with no QRS, then it does it again, longer and longer and longer and drops a beat. That is second degree type one, also known as Winky Bach. That is completely different from the second degree type two, because you'll notice with the second degree type two, this. You're gonna stare at that PRI, you'll see on the screen here, the EKG, and you'll notice that the PRI is 100% constant until it drops a beat. So it's not delayed, it's not that it's longer, longer drops, it's a constant PRI, it stays exactly the same, and then a beat just drops. And then it goes back to being constant, and then it drops. That is second degree type two. Third degree heart block. I give you the EKG, you look at it, here it is. And you say, I, if maybe you feel, you say, I have no idea what's going on here. It's not delayed, it's dropping beats, it's not longer, longer drops, it's not a constant PRI, what must it be? It's gotta be a third degree heart block. That's what it is, okay? So this is chaos. It's this, this third degree heart block doesn't make any sense at all. It's not longer, longer drops. It's not a constant PRI. It's not just delayed, it's chaos. It doesn't make any sense to our rules here. It's a third degree heart block, done. Now this is 
the worst one that we can get. And this one would be a variant of old age. These two, somewhere in the middle. These all here, got to be treated. This, 9 out of 10 times, benign, nothing to worry about. With all of these, I would consider doing a 12 week EKG. If they're symptomatic, they're getting one either way. There it is. Now, the way that NREMT is broken down, you can see on the screen here for the paramedic NREMT exam, how it's broken up. There's airway, respiration, and ventilation, cardiology and recess, trauma, EMS ops, medical, a lot in there. You also have OBGYN. You have an adult, a pediatric mix. With all that put together, this video right here is a small portion of what you need to know for the cardiology section. Now, my friends, what I've done is I've put together an entire video vault of over 400 videos of content going over NREMT prep at every single level. That includes the paramedic NREMT. That includes anatomy and physiology. That includes pharmacology. That includes paramedic school prep. That includes everything that a paramedic needs from day one of class all the way through, going through to their national registry and even on job tips to help you through ride time and clinicals. It's my life's work. It's called the Video Vault, the Video Study Course. And I can give you lifetime access right now by clicking down below in the description and going to my website, prepareforems.com. Over 400 videos of content plus our exclusive private community, our student group, where you can ask me questions directly inside that group. My friends, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more, go down below, grab that, and I'll see you next time. Let's go. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need, to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. For people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you ought to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time with everybody else. You want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple past the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. Took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.